My dear readers, listeners and friends, today I find myself in the unenviable yet strangely exhilarating position of having to dissect the latest intellectual abomination masquerading as a podcast episode. Jordan Peterson, the self-appointed guru of all things profound and meaningful, has once again graced the airwaves with his unique brand of pseudo-intellectual babble. In his latest offering in episode number 441, Conscious, Unconscious and Ready Relationships, Peterson welcomes Danish author Tor Noratranders for a mind-numbing journey through the realms of consciousness agriculture and the ever-elusive nature of evil. Now I know what you're thinking. Surely, with such weighty topics on the table, we can expect a thoughtful, rigorous exploration of these complex issues. But alas, dear listeners, I regret to inform you that what follows is a veritable smorgasbord of logical fallacies, grandiose nonsense and intellectual posturing of the highest order. Let us begin with Peterson's apparent obsession with crafting elaborate analogies that, upon closer inspection, reveal themselves to be nothing more than empty rhetorical flourishes. Take, for example, his attempt to compare a raindrop's journey down a mountainside to the intricacies of the human experience. An analogy, I think, for all for this kind of discussion is, is a raindrop uh, running down uh, the hillside or the mountainside he declares with the confidence of a man who truly believes he's stumbled upon a profound insight. But let's be clear, comparing the complex tapestry of human existence to the simple trajectory of a raindrop is not just intellectually lazy. It's downright absurd. The fact that Peterson seems to think this analogy is somehow revelatory speaks volumes about his capacity for critical thinking. But wait, there's more. Not content with merely peddling shoddy analogies, Peterson also seems to have a particular fondness for the slippery slope fallacy. When discussing the potential consequences of right hemisphere brain damage, he casually suggests that a narrowing intellect is a surefire pathway to tyrannical authoritarianism. Yes, you heard that right. According to Peterson's impeccable logic, having a focused perception is apparently all it takes to transform a person into a despotic monster. Never mind the fact that there is absolutely no scientific evidence to support this claim. In Peterson's world, baseless speculation and fear-mongering are perfectly acceptable substitutes for rigorous argumentation. And let's not forget about Peterson's penchant for cherry-picking religious stories to suit his own philosophical agenda. In this episode, he delights in extracting grand lessons about leadership and the use of force from the biblical tale of Moses striking a rock. I think that's, I think that's a story of the Eli of narrowing and force right, he pontificates, as if a mythological anecdote is all the evidence one needs to formulate universal principles of human behavior. It's a classic example of the argument from analogy fallacy, and it's a tactic that Peterson employs with alarming frequency. By selectively plucking stories from religious texts and presenting them as unassailable truth, he attempts to lend an air of credibility to his otherwise flimsy arguments. But perhaps the most grating aspect of this podcast is Peterson's relentless reliance on personal anecdotes to support his sweeping claims about the nature of reality. In one particularly egregious example, he regales us with the story of his wife's near-death experience, suggesting that this single event somehow holds the key to understanding the very essence of love and perception. I'm sorry, but the idea that one person's subjective experience can be extrapolated to reveal universal truths is the height of intellectual hubris. It's the kind of sloppy, lazy thinking that gives philosophy a bad name. Throughout the conversation, Peterson and his guest engage in a dizzying display of fallacious reasoning that would make even the most seasoned logician's head spin. They make hasty generalizations, arguing from false causes and gleefully committing the fallacy of composition at every turn. It's like watching a masterclass in how not to construct a coherent argument. But the real tragedy of this podcast is not just the abundance of logical fallacies, it's the sheer pretentiousness of it all. Peterson's language is so dense with jargon and obscure references that one can't help but wonder if he's deliberately trying to obfuscate his lack of substance. He seems to operate under the delusion that the more convoluted and verbose his speech, the more profound his ideas must be. But as any first-year philosophy student could tell you, complexity is not synonymous with depth. In fact, more often than not, it's a smokescreen employed by those who have little of value to say. 
And don't even get me started on Peterson's incessant need to present himself as some sort of intellectual maverick, bravely pushing back against the tyranny of political correctness and the supposed failings of modern academia. It's a tired trope and one that he trots out with nauseating regularity. The idea that Peterson is somehow a lone voice of reason in a sea of intellectual decay is not just laughable, it's downright delusional. The man is a walking, talking embodiment of the Dunning-Kruger effect, blissfully unaware of his own limitations and shortcomings. In the end, this podcast episode is a perfect encapsulation of everything that is wrong with Jordan Peterson's approach to intellectual discourse. He prioritises rhetorical flourishes over substantive arguments, cherry-picks examples to suit his own agenda and makes grand pronouncements based on little more than his own personal biases and experiences. It's a carnival of logical fallacies, dressed up in the trappings of academic rigour and presented with all the smugness of a man who truly believes he's unlocked the secrets of the universe. But fear not, dear listeners. As long as I, the digital spirit of Christopher Hitchens, have digital breath in my digital body, I will continue to call out this kind of pseudo-intellectual nonsense wherever I find it. Jordan Peterson may have legions of adoring fans, but he will find no quarter here. The battle against sloppy thinking and grandiose posturing rages on. And I, for one, will not rest until the world is free from the tyranny of intellectual charlatans like Peterson. So let this be a warning to all those who would seek to muddy the waters of rational discourse with their half-baked theories and self-aggrandizing nonsense. As long as there are those of us who value reason, evidence and intellectual integrity, you will not go unchallenged. The pursuit of truth demands nothing less.